Order. And the sitting is resumed. It's time for questions to the Minister for Regional Development, and we will start with listed questions. And before we start, can I just inform members that questions 1, 2, 8, and 14 have been withdrawn. So, questions 1, 2, 8, and 14 have been withdrawn. And I call Mr. Colum Eastwood. Uh, question number three, please, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, Translink has been considering proposals for a new rail uh, station in Londonderry for some time. As part of that process, it completed uh, a study uh, which was the subject of a public consultation during 2013. This identified the old Waterside station as the preferred location for a new rail station. Translink um, has progressed work on a business case for a new rail station. Initial estimates of costs of developing the old station at Waterside, which is a listed building, are considerable. It is also clear that the preferred location for a new uh, station presents the opportunity for a wider development which may attract EU funding sources. And I have asked officials to explore uh, this option further. The enhanced project would involve redeveloping the old station as an integrated active travel uh, public transport hub. Uh, in this regard, the project would link into the existing active travel infrastructure the Peace Bridge and related greenways, acting as a focal point for cycling, walking and public transport, and linking up the local walking and cycling uh, infrastructure with the regional rail network. In addition, to enhance the cross-border role of the station and reflecting funding criteria, the project would involve the development of cross-border cycle routes or greenways linking County Donegal into the existing active travel inf infrastructure within Londonderry. I should advise that the project is at an early stage and delivery will, of course, be dependent upon securing the necessary levels of funding and in seeking EU funding, um, ensuring com uh, uh, compatibility with specific eligibility criteria. I have, however, asked my officials to engage immediately with key stakeholders to develop detailed plans. I call Mr Eastwood for a supplement. Thank you. Uh, and can I thank the Minister uh, for his, his, his answer? And subject to see in the full detail, can I, can I welcome the, the announcement? But can I ask him just to uh, assure this House that, 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 that the city centre bus station uh, is secure because we see it as a, as a vital part of, uh, of, of our travel infrastructure and our public, uh, our, our public service infrastructure in the city? Member for his uh, supplementary question and indeed uh, the welcome that he's given uh, to uh, the, the announcement uh, uh, of the hub uh, proposal. And of course, uh, I, I think the general reception in the Londonderry area has been positive. Um, I think uh, uh, it, it might be helpful to, uh, to clarify further uh, the vision, if you like, uh, the, that we have for uh, a, a transport hub uh, at, at that waterside site. Um, and that vision is for um, an innovative active travel and public transport hub which would serve the wider city and the surrounding area. Um, it would provide um, cyclists with uh, some facilities um, and including parking and changing and maintenance uh, within a refurbished station. In addition, the station would be directly linked uh, to the Peace Bridge and the existing greenways. Opportunities would be explored to extend walking and cycling uh, infrastructure in the city, uh, including between the University, Ebrington, and indeed um, cross-border links. Now, the, the member particularly asked about the existing bus terminus. It is not in, uh, envisaged that the proposed development will include a new bus station. Uh, the intention is that connectivity uh, will be improved between existing facilities and new facilities, with the result that, uh, that overall transport services will be enhanced. Mr. Hoshin. I am going to ask the that it's going based on air. I thank the Minister for his answers. Uh, I wonder if the Minister has he got an estimate on any of the costings of, for, of any new hub for the waterside, and indeed when he referred to connectivity, how the waterside hub, new waterside hub, would connect uh, with the proposed uh, developments at Bell Arena or indeed those in village perhaps at Eglinton or Ballykelly in the future. Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. Obviously, we, we are in the very early stages uh, uh, of the project development, and it is not uh, possible to provide accurate costings. Estimates, and they are early estimates, would, would suggest somewhere in the region of £17 million, uh, perhaps as a starting point. So it is, that is a significant um, uh, potential investment. I have made clear 
that at this point in time there is nothing in any budget for this. I have been open and honest about that and of course uh, will uh, look to the member uh, for further support when, uh, when we develop our proposals as to uh, having them properly funded um, uh, with his uh, executive colleagues uh, around the executive table. Um, in, in terms of, of overall development, um, uh, the member will know the, the enhancements that we have made uh, in, in basically saving the, the, the coal rain to Londonderry uh, line. Uh, there is the potential for further enhancements at various parts of that. The loop system uh, work uh, is due to be undertaken within the next couple of years. We will continue to develop that. So all in all, uh, public transport opportunities for uh, enhancing uh, both road, rail uh, and uh, other modes, including cycling uh, and walking, uh, is something that uh, we are very, very focused on. And I call Mr. Trevor Clark. Uh, question number four. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, um, Northern Ireland Water already manages uh, the reservoirs under its control in line with the standards set out in the Reservoirs Act 1975, England and Wales. The introduction of the uh, Department of Agriculture and Rural Development's Reservoirs Bill will therefore not have a, a major impact on NI water. It will, however, be required to introduce a new activity uh, in uh, relation to the preparation and maintenance of formal on-site and off-site flood pl plans. Um, in addition, the introduction uh, of the bill is likely to reduce uh, the potential sale value of surplus reservoirs because a buyer will have to comply with the reservoirs bill and carry out the required surveys and any necessary maintenance. Mr. Clark for supplementary. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And I can thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, and I detect from the answer the Minister has given that uh, there is no quantifiable cost to what it will be to his department. But I am sure he is like myself will be disturbed by the number of reservoirs that we actually have that are actually in private ownership and the fact that these could have in those. And certainly from my uh, Little knowledge. I think the last one I ever heard was the, the dam busters, which was actually blown up before it caused any severe damage. So I'm sure the minister is somewhat concerned. But can the minister tell this house whether he will be supporting the reservoirs bills that goes through the states, given that some of us believe that it would be an unnecessary cost and burden to um, his department and landowners? Grateful to the member for his um, supplementary question and indeed his, his, his recollection of a very good film. Um, the, uh, what, I, what, what, I would, what I would say is that uh, obviously the uh, progression of the, of the Reservoirs Bill is a matter uh, uh, for um, the, the Department of uh, Agriculture and Rural Development uh, and indeed uh, through its committee stages and on the floor of this House. And uh, we'll await that. Uh, the, the point that he makes in terms of um, overall Ownership of, of, uh, uh, of reservoirs. NI Water own about approximately 46 reservoirs, 23 of which, uh, exactly half of which, uh, are no longer used as water supplies. So it may well be that in the future that, the, that NI Water will want to look at, um, uh, at offloading those and, of course, uh, to an engaging with both uh, the uh, uh, the, the public sector initially, other departments and other uh, perhaps interested bodies such as local councils. Um, and with the reorganisation of, of local government, um, it will be interesting to see from a recreational point of view whether or not any of these water facilities, previous uh, water supply facilities, uh, could be utilised by councils uh, to become uh, recreational areas. Yeah, and I call Declan Magalier. Well, good last can call you. Minister, there still is a lack of clarity as to who would be the reservoir manager in situations where NIW lease the reservoirs to say community organisations. Are you in a position to help clear up that matter? Well, I, I, I can say to the member that under the current legislation, which I, my understanding will still apply um, or will transfer even within the new legislation, um, uh, that who, whoever owns Whoever is considered the owner of a reservoir becomes the reservoir manager. So if it is NI Water currently, that's who owns it, that's who has to manage it. If it is purchased by any other body or perhaps any other group or even by an individual, uh, I think I outlined that in my initial answer to, to Mr. Clark, um, that uh, 
uh, you know, a buyer will have to comply with the reservoirs bill and carry out required surveys and any necessary maintenance. So we're absolutely clear that if you own it, then you manage it and you maintain it. Comment to John Dallet. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, could I fish a little bit deeper and ask the Minister, is there an opportunity here uh, to develop uh, fishing tourism, perhaps regenerate those communities and which have had those reservoirs down through the year, and is this a golden opportunity for this assembly to demonstrate some kind of collaborative development? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and, and uh, uh, I, I think there are opportunities. I, I, I think it's fair to say that um, uh, if, if reservoirs are, are, are no longer being used as a, as a water supply to NI water, then uh, effectively. Um, it makes more sense to, 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 uh, to put them uh, on, uh, on the open market uh, and, and find out uh, who, uh, whether it be a group or another department um, or another agency, would want to be responsible for them. Uh, I think I, I would want to encourage that. I think angling itself is uh, a very healthy, very popular pastime, and I see opportunities, therefore, for local councils to develop an interest uh, in it. Obviously, um, there, there would be initial cost in the purchase, but I think um, a lot of these uh, reservoirs have been well maintained over the years and, and, and they, they would come as an asset uh, to any council or any other group or body. Again, I call Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Will the Minister confirm when the work to drain Port of Vaux Reservoir began, when it is likely to, re to be refilled again? And what action has been taken to protect wildlife and habitat in that area? I'm grateful to the member for uh, the, uh, this uh, question, and it is an important uh, question. And I uh, beg some indulgence, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, in terms of the, the answer that I, uh, that I would propose to give. The, the lowering of the water level in uh, Port of Vaux, uh, Reservoir began in October 2013 and is required to. Uh, uh, to assist essential health and safety work, to refurbish valves and other maintenance work required to protect the structural integrity of uh, the reservoir. NI Water uh, is unable to complete the work without uh, draining the reservoir. Uh, this is due to the name, uh, nature of the con uh, construction of the valve tar and the need to access the SCAR valve for refurbishment. SCAR valve is an, uh, is an essential element for releasing water from uh, the impounding reservoir to ensure the, pr uh, the protection of properties from flooding downstream uh, in the event of a large rainfall event. It is expected that uh, water in the reservoir will be lowered to the required level by the end of April 2014 and the maintenance work will be completed by the end of July 2014. These dates are, however, subject to favourable weather conditions as the low water level must be maintained to enable maintenance work to progress. Um, some concerns have been raised, uh, the member will know, about the lowering of the water level. Um, and again, it is to uh, carry out essential health and safety work. Northern Ireland has had ongoing consultation with NIEA and DECAL on the planned works. I have taken a personal interest uh, in this because I am aware of um, adverse public comment, uh, and I will want to satisfy myself that both NI Water and all other agencies have performed uh, in the proper manner, and that uh, necessary consultations or at least briefings uh, should have been um, provided to all interested parties. So uh, I can say that. To prepare for the works, DECAL had not stocked fish into the reservoir since last August, and consequently the lowering of the water level should have had minimal uh, impact on the fish remaining in the reservoir. Okay, Minister, I will give you some leeway there, because I felt that you were responding maybe to some media commentary today, but the two-minute rule applies normally. Thank you. I call Mr Michael McDimsey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, question number five. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, from uh, April 1, 2014, Northern Ireland water has reduced all non domestic charges by 4 per cent on average. Uh, whilst the actual impact on businesses will differ depending uh, on the volume of water uh, they consume or the rateable value of their premises, the following examples give an indication of the savings that businesses typical of, uh, of those in South Belfast might 
expect this year. And a shop which last year paid £310 for water and sewage services will save £13. A restaurant or cafe which last year paid £1,540 will save £60. A medium-sized factory or industrial unit last year billed uh, for something in the region of over 3,000 would save £127. So it's not only businesses uh, who will benefit. These reductions will mean lower bills for hospitals, for churches, for residential homes and many voluntary organisations who also pay water and sewage charges. It is the second year in a row, the member will know, that NI Water has reduced non-domestic charges, and this means in real terms, taking into account inflation, non-domestic customers will be pay paying 11.7% less for their water and sewage services than they did two years ago. I think that's good news. Call Mr. Majimsi for supplementary. Thank you, uh, Speaker, and I say yes, that is good news as far as business is concerned. And could I remind him of another piece of good news which came out of road service, namely to reduce charges for car parking in, in all the towns in Northern Ireland, Newtonards, Macrofelt, Newry, Ballymena, all getting reductions. And that is to help businesses. And could I say to the Minister, therefore, that the, the one place that was excluded was Belfast. So if Belfast is included in the, the reduction of non-domestic water charges, why, what is the logic of Belfast being excluded? Uh, from the reductions because Belfast traders are equally entitled to the support. Thank you, Chair. Grateful to the member for his supplementary uh, and, of course, uh, uh, the House will know of, of the announcement that I made uh, within the last 24 hours uh, that uh, brings uh, some relief to town centres across uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, 95 car parks, I think, um, over something like 28 towns uh, uh, and cities across Northern Ireland. That has been warmly welcomed uh, by uh, uh, retail outlets and operators and indeed chambers of trade and commerce. Uh, and, uh, I understand uh, the point that the member makes uh, about Belfast. I've worked closely uh, with Belfast uh, Chamber and the other um, agencies, including Belfast uh, City Council, uh, on a number on a range of measures. And of course, and I, I, and I would um, say to the member that I think the, the uh, the, the, the quality of public transport the, the, the service that we have now in Belfast uh, in terms of buses and, and, and rail uh, has been significant. I think we also have to bear in mind that um, we have uh, park and ride facilities that, that serve um, in, in, into the centre of Belfast and you know, those park and ride facilities um, uh, have, have seen a, a boost uh, to retail trade as indeed have measures brought forward by TransLink in terms of fares uh, in, in uh, th their services, including Metro Saturdays, and uh, uh, very, very good value indeed. So um, the, the, the accumulation of, of all of those measures, I think, means that, that, that Belfast, I think, is being fairly treated. We will continue to look uh, at, at the issues uh, and give assistance where, wherever we possibly can. And of course, uh, both the supplementary and your answer had nothing to do with the original question. And, and could I just make that point very clearly? Uh, Fergal McKinney. Thank, thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, the, the reductions are, are, are welcome, and, uh, uh, but also the bills still re represent a substantial uh, cost to particularly small business. Um, what advice and support is available? to businesses in order to help them reduce uh, and conserve water and ultimately reduce bills. Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. And indeed, he, he raises a very important point, and one that, that, that many uh, operators of, of businesses, both small and large, uh, continue to raise. And it's important then that they liaise with, with, with NI Water to, uh, to see, both in terms of, of uh, how savings can be affected even as a consequence uh, of their bills, but their overall usage. And I would certainly uh, encourage uh, all businesses and indeed all customers to do that. Thank you. And I call Ms. Bronwyn McGowan. Gurmi, I'll get question six. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, the A4 at Enniskillen uh, forms part of the southwestern key transport corridor, which provides access between the east and the Fermanagh Lakelands and cross border regions. The majority of traffic currently passing through Enniskillen converges uh, at the Gale, Gale or Gale Square. 
uh, junction, depends how old you are, um, in the centre of the town, resulting in considerable congestion during periods of peak traffic demand. Details of the preferred route corridor for the proposed Inniskillen bypass were made public in July 2011. Since then, uh, scheme development has been ongoing with a view to being in position to announce the preferred route alignment in mid to late uh, 2014. Further development of the project beyond the identification of the preferred route will be dependent upon the outcome of future budgetary settlements. Ms. McGahan, for supplementary. Could I, I thank the Minister for his response. Can the Minister give me a clear time scale for the completion of this project? Well, I, I'm, I'm grateful uh, to, to, to the member for that. Uh, the member will know that um, uh, options for a preferred route are, are still under consideration. Um, and, you know, in terms of um, uh, an indicative ass assessment as to the likely scale of, of the works involved, um, I suppose we don't have sufficient detail to identify at, at this point the preferred solution. All of that factors in. Uh, to, 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 to timing and indeed cost. Our cu current estimate is somewhere between 20 and 30 million. Uh, but we will, uh, um, as I say, it is a scheme. We're aware of the importance of it, uh, and I think the potential is, is there. Um, but if, if all things were to go well, I, I, I would have thought that we would be looking at uh, procurement uh, and possible uh, contractor in place by mid-2018. But it is dependent on finance, and uh, that is the, the warning that I would uh, caution the member with. And again, the, the friendly advice that I offer her, as to her colleague, was that uh, um, if you want to help me get more money from executive colleagues, then I'll not turn you away. Mr. Tom Elliott. Uh, thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Minister will be aware, obviously, this is one of uh, the ones that I continually lobby him on, but <clears throat> has he actually held any consultations with the landowners uh, of the area of the preferred route or any testing being carried out on the ground conditions? Well, the, um, I suppose, uh, um, can I thank the member, first of all, for his supplementary, um, and, and, and I can confirm that he has uh, badgered me uh, continually about this particular project as it, I would expect him to do so um, uh, from his constituency point of view. Um, I think that we, we are still waiting for the, uh, the publication of the preferred route uh, later this year, and um, that statutory consultation that will flow from that, uh, potentially also a public inquiry, um, and that public inquiry, I suppose, could commence as early as, as 2016. Um, and again, the conclusion of the, of the requisite uh, environmental surveys and the assessments and detailed highway design will be, again, subject to availability of finance. And of course, uh, it is important that consultation with landowners and indeed property owners uh, would, would, would take place um, uh, on an ongoing basis. Mr. George Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, could I ask or be bold enough to ask the Minister what the progress is on the Dungiven Bypass? Let's see if there's a relationship that can be drawn if there isn't. Uh, grateful to the member for his uh, close um, uh, his, his geography lesson uh, <laughs> uh, and close proximity to the Inniskillen Bypass. But indeed, uh, the member will know that we are uh, still currently considering uh, the, the inspector's report arising out of uh, the public inquiry. Uh, issues on that are, are not yet concluded on, uh, and uh, we would hope then to uh, make progress on, uh, on um, outlining our thoughts on that uh, in the not too distant future. Thank you, Sam Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Principal. Deputy Speaker, I'm asking a question of the minister, and he's very, very familiar with it because I've continually. Uh, Handed him on, on the subject, but I hope he takes it to heart this time. It's Millennium Way in, in Lurgan from the Malcolm Road to Guildford Road area. The Lurgan people have been waiting about 20 years for that road to be ex extended and completed, and I'm still patiently waiting, Minister. Can you tell me when you're due to start? I was hoping you would at least use the word bypass. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I think a number of members have bypassed. Uh, <laughs> 
some of the main issues, but um, it's, 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 it's a test that hopefully uh, we're up to. I, I'm, I'm conscious of, of the interest that the member has, has had, a long-standing interest, and has been pressing for uh, work to be done at, at Millennium Way uh, in, in Lurgan uh, over many years. I am pleased to update him in that uh, we recently um, uh, obtained uh, an updated planning permission for the scheme. Uh, and that uh, is, is really hot off the press. That came through from planning service, I think, at the end of last month. Uh, and again, that, that helps us and hopefully will help us as we seek to progress that, that important scheme. And I know it will give benefit uh, to, uh, to people who, who, who live and who travel in uh, Lurgan. Thank you. And Mr Jim Wells isn't in this position, so I call Maeve McLaughlin. Question number nine. Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, the 2011 Regional uh, Strategic Transport Network Journey Time Survey reports that during the morning peak, the Northwest Key Transport Corridor, which includes the A6, has an average travel time for, for Belfast to Londonderry of 1 hour 22 minutes, with an average speed of 49.9 miles per hour. And from Londonderry to Belfast of 1 hour 33 minutes with an average speed of 43.3 miles per hour. This is over a distance of 68 miles. In comparison to other journeys during the morning peak, uh, on the eastern seaboard corridor, Lorne Harbour to Belfast, a distance of 24 miles takes 44 minutes. In the opposite direction, the journey time is 32 minutes. This is prior to the commencement of the ongoing works uh, on the A8. Elsewhere on the eastern seaboard corridor near to Belfast, a distance of 35 miles takes 41 minutes, with the journey in the opposite direction taking 33 minutes. Um, on the northern corridor, the journey time from Moira roundabout along the A26 to the M2 in Coleraine, a distance of 62 miles, uh, is 1 hour and 21 minutes. In the opposite direction, it takes 1 hour and 15 minutes. On the western corridor, the journey from Londonderry to Straban, Oma Ballygolly, and the land frontier at Ochmacloy, a distance of 56 miles takes 1 hour 20 minutes. In the opposite uh, direction, it takes 1 hour 32 minutes. On the south southwestern corridor, the journey time from Inniskillen to Belfast, a distance of 84 miles, is 1 hour 38 minutes, whereas in the opposite direction, it takes 1 hour 21 minutes. And the Carrick Fergus to Belfast morning commute of 6.8 miles along the A2 takes 22 minutes to complete, whereas in the opposite direction, it takes 14 minutes. This is prior to the commencement of the ongoing improvement works. Happy to hear your supplementary question. <laughs> <laughs> you probably answered all the supplementaries, but uh, Maeve McLaughlin for a supplementary. Good to uh, thank the Minister for that response, but as somebody who travels the Derry to Belfast Road at least four times a week, um, I'm wondering with a one hour 23 minutes, is the Minister in a helicopter? <laughs> um, or, or what would the minister be driving? But specifically on the difficulties on the A6 um, at Dungiven and Moneynick, you know, is there an assessment there of the average travel time, bet mm. particularly between those two bottlenecks? For a moment. Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to, uh, to the member, and I'm glad she didn't ask me to repeat uh, the answer that I'd given. Um, but the. the the issue that she raises, uh, I suppose, is fundamental uh, as to the need for the ASX scheme. Uh, and I think, uh, and I would want to say that in terms of uh, that, I, I'm a supporter of that project and I want to see it advanced as quickly as possible. Uh, and I think that would significantly uh, impact uh, and benefit journey times particularly. Um, uh, I can say that in terms of uh, both the ASX and Randallstown section, uh, I, I am pursuing um, even uh, to, to look at the potential for um, alternative finance, uh, discussions with the European Investment Bank and, and indeed uh, DFP um, uh, uh, within the executive. Uh, and we are looking uh, at options where we could um, bring that scheme forward. So, you know, there is no lack of willingness for us to bring forward a project of that nature. Thank you. And that ends the period for oral questions, and we will now move on to topical questions. And I call Mr. Robin Newton. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, uh, given the history of uh, summertime flooding in East Belfast, when the rainfall is a deluge within a short period of time, can I ask what action the Minister is currently taking 
or intends to take to protect householders over the summer period? I'm grateful to the member uh, for, his, uh, for, for his question and, and um, the member will be aware uh, that um, uh, during the, the last episode, uh, episode of uh, flash flooding, as it then was, uh, within the last uh, couple of years, um, I, I, I made it my business to go out on site and, and look at conditions uh, and obviously to, to try and bring forward measures that it will alleviate um, uh, and improve um, the systems that operate there. Uh, there are capacity issues um, and there are, I suppose, issues of historic, uh, of a historic nature. But nevertheless, uh, I do believe uh, NI Water have been attempting to uh, improve um, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the service that they offer there to alleviate. Um, I can never uh, stand here and say that we have flooding solved or that it is eradicated. What we would want to do is to take measures that will mitigate against uh, flooding. But when uh, in sharp uh, periods of rain, um, volume can sometimes um, over, uh, overtake uh, uh, the, the, the current systems. And it is a matter of, of trying to um, improve the systems that are there um, over a gradual period. And of course, that is not a cheap option either. And, uh, and we shouldn't underestimate some of the costs involved. I call Mr. Newton for a supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and uh, I welcome the words of the Minister. But it would, uh, given, as I said, the history that there is of this, and some residents who have been flooded three and four times now, it would, be give, it would give some encouragement if either of the capital schemes that are planned for the area could, in fact, either be announced and brought forward. Uh, and that, I think, would give at least some encouragement where there would be, where residents would see investment to address the issue. Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, uh, to the member, and, and uh, I don't disagree with, with his assertions. Um, he will know that we are uh, financially challenged. He will also know that um, his, his party colleague and my executive colleague, uh, Minister Hamilton, uh, is painting a reasonably gloomy picture over the next couple of years in terms of uh, investment. That impacts on all departments, including uh, regional development, which in turn uh, impacts on, on the, on the uh, agencies that, that are under my control, including Northern Ireland Water. So, you know, if, if more funding can be made available and freed up, then I, I'll certainly not be slow in, in uh, ensuring that it is spent uh, properly to mitigate and reduce the risk of, of, of flooding, not only in East Belfast but in other areas. And of course, uh, we, we had the impact uh, over this last or this latest winter of uh, the coastal flooding issues, and they've been impacting too uh, uh, in areas. So we need to think carefully as to how uh, we can get the necessary funds to be made available to, uh, to spend that money wisely. Thank you, and I call Mr. Ian McRae. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. The, the Minister will be aware that I have raised the issue of um, charging for admission to motorbike races for um, other road races um, in line with the Ulster Grand Prix. Can the Minister update the House on the discussions he's had? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to, uh, to the member for his uh, topical question. Uh, and could I say that um, I, I think I attended recently the launch of uh, the North West 200 event. And I recently uh, signed off the, the roads orders, and that's principally uh, my prime and, if you like, sole responsibility. Um, it, it is an event that I support, uh, and uh, it was for one of those reasons that I uh, successfully carried through uh, the legislation uh, to, to provide um, extra flexibility in, the, in terms of contingency days uh, for the North West 200. The, the, the sport itself uh, is, not, is not my responsibility. Um, and I would uh, respectfully say that uh, DECAL um, would have uh, or should have uh, some uh, input in that. For some reason, um, and again I have to be uh, honest, there, there seems to be uh, not much enthusiasm from DECAL to actually support uh, that particular sport. That's a matter for, for others to comment on or to, or, or to explain. And of course uh, his own party colleague, uh, Minister Foster, in terms of tourism, um, uh, has, has responsibilities uh, um, uh, in terms of ensuring that the market 
um, the, the, the tourism market is, is fully exploited for the international event that the Northwest 200 has, has become. Um, I thank the Minister for, for his answer and um, somewhat confused in the sense of why other um, executive ministers, um, namely the, the, the decal minister, would maybe be found wanting in respect of this. But can the Minister um, assure the House and indeed the, the motor cycling fraternity, as it were, the organisers of the, the races, that he will um, have discussions with his executive colleagues um, in respect of that, whether it be the um, Deputy Minister or indeed the Decal Minister, to try and ensure that um, the issues that he refers to not being moved forward are indeed done so. Grateful to the member for his supplementary. And I, I mean, I can confirm that, that in uh, the um, aftermath of, of the washout, effectively on the Saturday uh, of last year's event, uh, I, I did uh, have discussions with, with ministerial colleagues. Uh, both the, the decal minister and, and the deputy minister. Uh, that, in turn, uh, led each of us to, um, to look to responsibilities that we all have in terms of uh, helping and assisting with the organisers of the North West. Uh, the product of that was the, uh, was the amendment to the, to the road racing bill that I uh, successfully carried through this House. I know that that has been um, appreciated, I think, by the North West organisers. Uh, and by the whole house generally. So I think, uh, the, the, uh, um, I think a, it is a matter for other ministers to indicate uh, how they have been helping and assisting um, uh, the, the organisers of not only the North West 200, but the other sports um, that we have, um, uh, which are very popular, highly popular uh, in Northern Ireland. Thank you. And I call Mr. Alvin McGuinness. Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, I've never, I was never a great fan of Michael Pertillo when he was in office, but uh, I am a great fan of his uh, programmes in relation to railways, and recently he emphasised in his programme about Irish railways the importance of the route between Belfast and Dublin, the enterprise. Could the Minister update the House in relation to any uh, plans that there may be in the offing in relation to improving the enterprise. I'm grateful to the member for his, um, for his uh, topical question and indeed uh, for his uh, interest in seeing uh, railways uh, uh, enhanced and progressed. And, uh, and I'm happy to say that um, uh, the, the, the enterprise, we have been able uh, to uh, put forward a, a scheme uh, through SEUPB uh, and, and working with, with, with other departments uh, here in the executive uh, to, that will enhance facilities to the enterprise service. Uh, and I think that's a very welcome thing. Uh, that, uh, if you like, uh, was the replacement scheme uh, to uh, the project at, at Narrow Water uh, Bridge. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to rehearse the, the, the disappointments that many uh, had in respect of that. But I think to ensure that European money available to this executive was not lost. It was important to bring forward a scheme. The best candidate for that uh, was um, um, uh, work to the enterprise, which will, um, I think, enhance uh, the existing service. Um, it had grown a bit tired and jaded, but I, I think with this work, I think it, uh, it, it will uh, continue to attract um, more users, including, I hope, himself and indeed Michael Portillo. <laughs> I call Mr McGuinness for uh, a supplementary. Well, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and, and I'm sure uh, Mr Portillo, if he's listening, will be very pleased with the Minister's response, as I am indeed. Um, in the meantime, Minister, uh, when one warily is, is, is travelling home from Dáil Éireann, having visited uh, that esteemed institution uh, <laughs> uh, by, by, by train, there is a gap. There is a gap between around about five o'clock and seven o'clock, which there is no train service. Do you think the minister could make representations to see if that gap might be filled? Well, I am very grateful to uh, the member, and uh, whether or not it, re it, it reflects a long-standing ambition of his to be a more permanent member of uh, <laughs> Dollar, and I will not make any comment. 
Uh, but I, I mean, ultimately, we, we want to improve the, the travelling times between Belfast uh, and Dublin. Uh, I think that's in everybody's interest. It's in the interest of business. It's in the interest uh, of, of uh, tourists. Um, and it's generally in the interest of both Northern Ireland railways and uh, their counterparts. There are uh, some issues. Um, uh, in terms of um, the Dublin network services that have to be accommodated. The member will probably know that. But uh, I am very pleased to say that uh, I, on these issues I have a good working relationship with uh, my counterpart in the Republic of Ireland uh, and I hope that we can progress things. And I see uh, the, the work uh, that we are um, engaged in, in in providing increased facilities um, under the European measure, under the SEUP funding, uh, as a continuation of that. Thank you. And I call Mr. Peter Weir. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Principal Speaker. And, uh, the Minister, don't worry, I'll not be either a portalista or indeed uh, be mentioning bypasses. But if I can return to an issue which was touched on earlier of Portofoe Reservoir, uh, and can I ask the Minister specifically why uh, the Northern Ireland Environment Agency and specifically its wildlife uh, unit was not either consulted or its advice sought before action was taken at, at Portofoe? Well, I, I, I um, understand the importance, and uh, I suppose under topical question, uh, a member is entitled to, uh, to, uh, to raise any issue. Um, I dealt, I think, in a fairly extensive answer to, um, to Mr. Cree, um, uh, the, the current position. What I have said is, I think there are lessons that uh, can and should be learned uh, as a consequence of this in terms of co uh, consulting. Uh, and I want uh, and will uh, be uh, tasking uh, officials to provide me with uh, the information and the, the full background uh, to this work. I understand it has raised uh, public concerns, um, uh, but I do also say that uh, my understanding is that both NIEA and DECAL certainly were aware of uh, the intention to carry out um, necessary uh, maintenance work to the reservoir. Um, I had indicated that uh, DECAL, as a consequence of that, had not stocked anything since August 2013. I think if there were missing parts in terms of consultations, uh, I will want to get to the bottom of that so that we can identify that and learn the lessons and apply them uh, for future use. Thank you, Minister. For his positive response in relation to that, I wonder could the Minister then give us an assurance that in light of when the investigations do take place uh, in terms of the lessons that learned that perhaps a, a written statement will be produced to the Assembly on that and assurance is given that the mistakes in terms of consultation that were made with Portofoe will not be repeated. I'm grateful to, again to the member for his supplementary. I don't want to make a drama out of a crisis, uh, but I, do, uh, I, I will reflect on the information that's given to me and, and on its uh, public uh, content. Uh, and um, uh, I will reflect on the best way of communicating that either to uh, members of the constituency of North Down and Strangford, because I think it impacts uh, – it's, it's right in the boundary. The reservoir itself is, it forms part of the boundary between certainly the two council areas, uh, if not the, the, the assembly and parliamentary constituencies. But uh, we will give consideration as to how best that will be communicated. Call Mr Raymond McCartney. Uh, can I ask the Minister, in, in line of the, the questions on the railway lines, and, and all our Michael, Michael Palin described that the already Belfast line is the most beautiful journey in the world. And I know the Minister, in previous questions, has answered around the new hub in, in the waterside. Can you give us some update on the, the park and ride at Bell Arena? Uh, grateful to the Member for, uh, for, his, uh, for, for his question. Um, the, the issue that he raises, um, uh, if, he, if he would care to um, write to me specifically on the issue, I, I will ensure that we get an update. Uh, I'm aware that there are uh, plans and proposals, not only in terms of uh, um, railway, but also other modes of transport, including, as he said, uh, a park and ride, which, was, which will fac facilitate uh, sustainable modes of transport and, uh, and assist people uh, in the general area. I think that's where we want to get to, um, not only in Belfast, but in Londonderry and in other places in Northern Ireland. The member will be aware that I was recently in Copenhagen and saw uh, sustainable, uh, evidence of sustainable modes of transport really making a difference 
to the quality of life experienced by the local population. That's something that we, could, we would do well to replicate here. That's something that I'm actually passionate about uh, and, I, and I see um, uh, where I see opportunities and where funding is available, then we will certainly try to exploit those. I'm keen on cycling, I'm keen on walking, and, and I'm keen on rail and public transport and bus and transport issues. Thank you. And order that this time is up. I'm sorry, no time for supplementary.